Over the past week, I've received several requests to do a video on a very specific topic. Uh, the most recent request was today on a Facebook post I made. And that topic is the Cincinnati Revolution inside the NRA. Because a lot of us have talked about it lately and a lot of people don't seem to understand what it is. And other people that do understand what it is think we should have another one. And today I want to take a moment to tell people what it actually was, for those of you that don't know how to use Wikipedia, and explain why it can't happen again. You see, back prior to the late 70s, the NRA was not pro-individual gun rights at all. The vast majority of their history, they have not been pro-you or me owning defensive weaponry. They were pro-hunter, pro-sportsman, that was about it. Well, in the 70s, they had decided that they were just going to completely abandon individual rights, move their headquarters to Colorado, and become just a hunting organization. Well, the membership was like, that's not what we pay you for, so they revolted. They voted out all the board members at the time that were in favor of just hunters' rights and voted in new board members that were pro-individual right. Well, that really screwed up the NRA because the NRA was, that wasn't their deal. And that wasn't anything they had wanted to be. But the membership decided it, it's what they wanted them to be. And that was a good thing because it turned it into an organization that actually fought for us. It actually fought for the Second Amendment. It didn't just fight for people being able to go out and, you know, shoot quail or whatever it was. So that was a good thing. But it can't happen again. A lot of people are thinking, that well, right now what we need is a good revolution inside the NRA. We need to change the NRA. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to happen because of the revolution back in 77 with the NRA. Because right after that revolution, they became very pro-individual rights. But that faded very quickly. You see, they changed the board, which did have power, but they didn't get rid of the people behind the scenes that didn't agree with the new stance. And they also ended up bringing in other people that didn't really agree with the uh, principle of individual rights either. They were just businessmen. They were people that wanted to make money, wanted to grow the organization. Well, over a not a very long period of time, they basically changed the structure of the NRA where the board has no power now. And if you don't believe that, spend five minutes talking to Pete Brownell. He'll tell you. The board has no power. He thought he had power when he took the position. He has found out since then he does not. And for those people out there that are boycotting Brownells, don't do it. Pete Brownell is on your side. He just has no power. He's a figurehead. He has no more power than Ted Nugent has. When they put people like Ted Nugent on the board, you should know that the board is just figureheads. And the real power lies in the hands of the power brokers behind the scenes, the appointed positions, the business positions. And they have made it now to where the board doesn't matter. They've taken away all their actual executive power. And plus, they have rigged the system to where you can't even be sure who you voted for. The vote is unaudited. It's unconfirmed. You know, it's just, it's clandestine. Uh, if you petition the NRA for the voting information, an actual record of the voting information, they will not give it to you. Even when they're supposed to, they will fight you tooth and nail all the way, even if they're on the wrong side of the law, to not give it to you. I know people that have tried to get the information and cannot. The NRA will spend millions on lawsuits to bankrupt you before they give you the information. And there's a reason for that, because it's a sham. The board is a sham. It is a, it's just a show for people out there like you and me to think something's being done or think you have a say. They learned from that Cincinnati revolution that, wow, if we let the board actually have power and we actually hold an honest vote, then we don't hold the power, the people do, and they couldn't have that. So now they have completely uh, castrated the board. The board has no power. They have bastardized the election system to where nothing bad can ever happen to them, and even if it does, they don't have to admit it did, and all the power just rests in the hands of certain people who just want to make money. So this whole notion that we're going to fix the NRA, it's not going to happen. The NRA has structured itself in a way now that it can't be fixed. You could just keep throwing money after money after money and money and more money at it. won't fix anything. It'll just strengthen the people that are already there in power that have set it to where you can't change it. So if you see someone saying, put me on the board and I'll change things, they know they can't change things. If they didn't know that, they'd have to just speak to someone that's on the board now for two minutes and they would know they couldn't change things. Those people just want to get into a position of power so that they can play the game and they can profit from it because they know there is nothing they're going to be able to change about the NRA. It's just not structured that way anymore. So for those of you out there that were wondering what the 77 revolution inside the NRA was, the Cincinnati revolution, that's what it was. It's when the members took control of the NRA. 
And if you want to know if we can do that again now, no, we can't. Specifically because of what happened in 77. They have isolated themselves against that ever happening again. So for those of you out there that are thinking, we're going to change the NRA, you're just wrong. You need to wake up. You need to stop throwing good money after bad. And you need to start supporting something better like the GOA.